Hello, this is Kieran from Server Pro, and today we're back with another tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you how to set up the World Border plugin on your Minecraft server. So, let's get straight into it. So, to install this plugin, you need to make sure that you are running Spigot or Craft Buckets on your server already. Once you are, go to the Plugins tab on the left hand side, make sure you're on the Bucket Plugins tab, and search for World Border with no spaces, and then click search, and it should be this one with a similar link. Then click install latest and then restart your server to load the plugin. So once you've given your server a few moments to start up, you should be able to go ahead and join it to take a look at the commands. So as you can see, I've just joined my Minecraft server, and if we run the command forward slash WB, you can see that it lists some of the available commands to the plugin. So here you're able to see all of the commands that are available. You can also go into different pages where it lists further commands. For example, if you were to type forward slash WB2, that takes you to page two. And there are five pages, so feel free to have a look at all of them. So we're just going to be going through some of the essential commands for this plugin. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually setting up a world border. So the way you do this is type forward slash WB set and then the amount you want it to be. So if you want your world border to be 10,000 blocks in each direction, you'd put 10,000. If you wanted it to be 5,000, you would put 5,000. In this case, just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to put the small amount of 10. So if I do that and click enter, you can see that it has set the world border for this world and it does it from the position that you're standing from. So from that way, it will be 10 blocks, then that way it will be 10 blocks, that way 10, and again that way. So if we walk this way, you'll see in 10 blocks, we reach the end of the world and it knocks us back. And again, it will do it if we do go in the opposite direction. As you can see, it's working there. So that's our world border set, that's fantastic. So there are a couple of other ways, as you can see here, to set world borders. So you can, say if you wanted it to be an oblong shape, so if you wanted it to be longer one way than it was the other, for example, say if you wanted it to be 10 blocks that way, 10 blocks that way, and then 15 blocks that way, and 15 blocks that way, you can change the radius. So you would type slash WB set, and then you would type the X coordinate that you want it to be. So say if you wanted it to be um, 30 blocks each X coordinate direction, and then you only wanted it to be 10 blocks each Z coordinate direction, you would do that and click enter, and then it would work. So it'd be longer one way than it would the other. And say if you've got different worlds, you can also specify the world that you're talking to. So here you would just put the name of the world, so factions, and it would set it for the factions world if you had multiple worlds that is. And you can do it various other ways, however, we're just going to be looking at it and the way I've done it, as it is the most simple. So now that we've set our world border, let's say we wanted to change it. So let's say I wanted to change it to be um, 20 blocks in each direction from a different location. So I would go to the different location, and then I would simply just run the same command and change it to reflect whatever I want it to be, and then it would work. So now it would be 20 blocks from this direction, rather than 10 blocks from the other one. As you can see, it's much further than 10 blocks now and it is working. So you can also clear um, a border, so you just type slash WB clear, and then click enter, and that will remove the border, so we would be able to go past what the border used to be set at. As you can see, I've gone further than 20 blocks here, and it is working. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set a quick border again, just for the demonstration. So another thing that you can do is change the shape of it. So you can do slash WB shape, and then you can make it either a square, or round. So if we were to type round, that would set the default shape to being round, so it'd be circular, and you can also set it to be square or rectangular, so you can just do that by typing square, and then it would be set to um, a square. So if we were to go this way, it should be about 10 blocks, which is there, and now it, because it's square, it won't just end here, it will keep going on until the next corner, if that makes sense, because circles don't have corners, but squares do. So yeah, feel free to change that to whatever you want. I prefer the circular shape, as that makes it 10 blocks all the way around, where square, it is a bit further than 10 blocks in some locations. So another setting that is really good to use is the fill setting. So if you type forward slash WB fill, it will fill the world up to the world border. So that will generate all the chunks around it. So if you were to do this before you launched a server, for example, it could help increase the performance as the server would not be loading chunks as much because it's already loaded them in the past. So if I was just to type that, so that's WB fill, it would come up with this and then I'd have to confirm that. And then it will start generating the chunks around my world border. But I only have um, a 10 block world border, so it's not that far. Sometimes this can take quite long depending on how big your world border is. It's completely dependent on the size. So another thing you can do is trim the world. So if you were to type slash WB trim, that will trim the world that's outside of the border. So if we type that and then confirm it again, 
it will trim the world outside of the border so that no chunks are loaded that haven't already been loaded in the past. So if we go on to page three, there are a few other settings here that we can also take a look at. So we're going to be taking a look at the, the knockback command. So you can change, so when I go to a world border, for example, it knocks us back a little bit, as you can see there, it knocks us back. So you can change how far that knocks you back. So if I was to type slash WB knockback and set it to something a bit stupid like five, and I go to the world block, it will send me back quite far. As you can see, it's sending me back a lot further now. Whereas if I set it to one, it wouldn't set me back that far. As you can see, it's much, much closer than it was previously. So feel free to set that to whatever you want. It's completely up to you. You can also turn the knockback effect completely off or on with WB whoosh on or off. So feel free to use that also. The next message we're going to take a look at is the WB set message. So when you go to a world border, you can see that it displays the message, you have reached the end of this world. So you can change this to display whatever you want by typing slash WB set message and then the text. So let's say I wanted it to be, you cannot travel past this point. So now if I go to the world border, it should display that instead. And you can use color codes if you want to. So say if I was to set this to um, a light blue, for example, and then it would say it in that. And again, you can use multiple color codes. You can also use formatting codes, so bold and italic. And um, But feel free to use whatever you want. So let's take a quick look at page four. And we're going to take a look at some other essential settings. So you can stop people from placing blocks past the border. So sometimes if a player is close to the border and you have this enabled, they can place blocks past the border. As you can see, I'm breaking, breaking and placing blocks behind it. And you can disable that by typing slash WB prevent block place on so now people wouldn't be able to place blocks past the border and again you can do a similar thing for mob spawning so if someone stands close to a world border it can generate mobs outside of it so to turn that on to prevent it from happening you would type slash wb prevent mob spawn and then on or off if you wanted to enable it so that's basically all the settings that we're going to be taking a look at for world border it's a really simple plugin there's not much to it all of the commands that are available are all nicely laid out as you can see in game and um, with the help command so feel free to take a look at all the other commands we've not gone through them all just some of the essential ones so yeah if you've run into any problems feel free to contact our support i'm sure they'll be more than happy to help you and i uh, feel free to suggest any new tutorials you'd like to see down in the comment section below so thank you for watching i hope that you have a fantastic day goodbye